Hi, uh, today I was supposed to have- <laughs> Here I am. Oh, y'all better prepare for a bunch of skin food. It doesn't post any other ones. I'm recording other ones, but um, I've been really, really busy this week, so um, I haven't had time to edit them. So I'm kind of just uploading a really quick one today. But because I think people are still on the whole Kyla thing, I think we're just gonna do something simple because I was actually gonna make a video today about the whole whitewashing thing uh, because that is a thing apparently. So today I'm just gonna keep it very cute, very PG-13 for the kids. I know there are a lot of people that are watching me that are in the middle of learning Korean, which I think is really great. Um, but one thing that I've noticed that some people tend to do, which is, you know, it's not their fault. They're, they're probably still learning. But one thing some students that are learning new language tend to do um, is directly translate um, words from their mother tongue to like the language that they're learning. And although in some cases this is okay, a lot of times, um, while not technically grammatically incorrect, it just doesn't fit like the nuance, the uh, kind of whenever you have a phrase in English and you're trying to learn it in like maybe Korean or something, it's good to find out what is the most, I guess, used or most natural phrase, I suppose, that um, native Korean speakers will use. And so the other day got me thinking that there are a lot of phrases that I've learned and use uh, when I talk to my friends in Korean that in English sound completely off like they're really weird but um that's just the words that they use or not words but like phrases phrases and words so today i'm going to give you guys a list of words that in korean are very common but when translated directly into english sound kind of like weird or like they just don't sound like they would be what they mean uh i'm sure there are maybe similar lists on youtube or the internet or something floating around um if this is if this bears resemblance to any of those um Sorry, I don't know, you can, you can, if there's any that you can find, I guess you can put them in the comments. Um, these are just ones that I came up with myself, um, like, in my head, or that I remembered, or I asked some of my friends, so... Um, again, if this bears resemblance to any other list, then I'm sorry, I guess. But I feel like most people will learn this word first, is 안녕하세요. Now please, my pronunciation isn't that great, so please don't fucking come for me, please. But 안녕하세요, it, it, it means hello, it means hello. But um, if you directly translate, it actually means are you in peace? It's actually a question. Um, 안녕 meaning peace, 하세요 is like the like 존댓마 version of like to do. And so 안녕하세요 is a question, it, which literally means are you in peace? So, kind of just like in uh, Filipino, the word that we use for hello is 그무스다, which literally means like how have you been doing? But you know, the way we use it is just like hi or hello. Now the next one is Maomedro. Um, a lot of people uh, will learn the word joahe, which is not wrong. I mean, joahe means to like something. So if uh, let's say like, oh, do you like this food? Oh, mm, joa. Then that's that's not wrong. But there are certain things like, for example, if you're like choosing clothes and you know, like you're choosing between certain uh, outfits or like articles of clothing when you're shopping, if someone's like, oh, like what Like how is this? Um, then if you like it. You can say, oh, choa, I guess, but the phrase that most uh, native Korean speakers will use is maome duro, which literally means it enters my heart. Uh, maome is like heart, but kind of like, not like physical heart, but more like spiritual heart. So I guess it enters my spirit soul, <laughs> I guess. Um, so oftentimes you'll hear that when it comes, it's very, it depends on the situation. More often than not, I'll just say, oh, maome duro. When I'm texting, I'll just type mame duro, which is like a short version. I don't know. I don't. I think that's more like. I don't think that's grammatically correct. A lot of native Koreans, when they're texting, like to shorten words. Like they do that a lot. So that's just one of them. Another phrase for kind of like, oh, you like something, is ego nestaria, uh, which I'm sure if you have any basic knowledge of Korean, you probably can already guess. This it means this is my style, or you can just say oh nestaria. It means like what it sounds. It's like this is my style, which. To me, like it's not grammatically incorrect, like if you directly translate in Korean, like uh, directly translate to English, um, oh, this is my style, but it just sounds a little awkward, I guess. But in Korea, you'll often hear it uh, when, say, like a certain appearance that someone has, for example, like, like let's say if someone likes muscular guys or something, you know, they'll see a bunch of muscular guys out there at the club and they own oh, this tarea or something like that. You, you know what I mean. Or maybe you don't know what I mean. When friends um, kind of like they hang out and they separate and go home, oftentimes when they get home, they'll ask their friend if they had gotten home safely. So when you get home, you'll ask your friend, Oh, 집에 잘 들어갔어? I love how I'm starting all these phrases. Oh, ah, oh. 집에 잘 들어갔어? Which literally translated is, 
Did you enter your house well? Which isn't weird or anything in English, I guess, but again, it just sounds a little awkward. You'll often hear the word chai, which is well. Um, whether it be, oh, chai mo wa sa, did you eat well? Um, chai ja sa, did you sleep well? But yeah, I just think that one is a little, cause like I'm so used to it that when I think, when I think of it, in, when I take the time to think of it in English, did you enter your house well? I think that sounds really just silly. <laughs> so this next one is more like slang, and I feel like it's kind of going out of style. Um, like a lot of words, like the, remember the word oichang, which I think is still hold on. I think it's still in my hashtags for my YouTube videos. It's putting the word ke in front of adjectives, so the word ke, which is dog, um, putting that in front of like joa, so ke joa or ke shiro. You basically just use it as like an adjective, so you vary do something, so all oh, kejoa, which is I, I really like it, or kejoa, like I really hate it. So um, it kind of adds a little bit of flavor and spice to your words. But again, I don't, I feel like people don't really use it as often these days. I still use it. Um, and there are some people that use it every now and then, but um, yeah, I thought that one was just interesting. The next one is pat mogasa. And this one is very, very common. You probably heard it like on dramas or something. Um, and it's not really that weird, but um, oh my God, all these all these words, I'm like, it's not that weird, but like, <laughs> pop mawasa literally means, did you eat rice? And the thing is, pop literally means rice, but you use it whenever you're talking about food in general. So basically you're just saying, did you eat? Um, but literally it, it just means, did you eat rice? I don't know, I thought that one was worth putting in there. So from here on forward, it's going to be mostly words that they call konglish, which is just Korean words that stem from English words but they don't necessarily mean those English words in Korean, if that makes sense. So <laughs> so the next one is one I'm sure everyone, if you're into K-pop, you probably heard it once, twice, or like a million times, and that's fighting. Um, fighting is fighting, fighting. And clearly we all know what fighting means, but uh, when you use it in Korean, it just means, it's just like a way of cheering people on or cheering people up, I guess. But oftentimes when a Korean is teaching this to a foreigner, they'll translate it as cheer up. But I feel like you tell someone cheer up when they're sad or something, but I guess you could say fighting in that situation, but I feel like it's more so like if someone is like about to go on stage to perform or something, or if someone is going to give a speech, or someone is like, oh, they're at work, uh, they're at school or something, they have a test, like, oh, fighting. Because I feel like when you say cheer up, it's not like, oh, cheer up. Anyway, we all know what that one is. Uh, the next one is sum. Because in the dating world, for me at least, whenever you're discussing someone in their love life, and they don't have like a boyfriend or girlfriend necessarily, but there's someone that they're like, talking to oftentimes it'll be like oh there are you talking to someone or are you talking talking to someone it's kind of like the stage before dating like you guys know that you're probably going to be dating like be official or whatever but there's no like a word for it in korean they say sum you call that a sum like i have a sum uh but sum literally just is the word sum um I, and i think that's just short for something so you have something with someone and this next one I'm kind of just throwing in here, but when you're asking someone if they have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you don't... Uh, you can ask like, oh, 남자친구 있어? Or, oh, 여자친구 있어? But there's a word for kind of like, just a lover in general, and that's ain. Um, so if you ever hear that word, then you'll know what it is, or if you're studying, then there's a new word for you to learn. So the next word is eye shopping. Um, eye shopping is basically window shopping. We're all, we all know the struggle, like, oh, bitch, I got, I'm broke as fuck, so let's go eye shopping, which means, like, let's go shopping, but with our eyes and not pulling out the fucking, the dough, the cash, the credit cards. Speaking of shopping, I'm going to be talking about a few kind of, like, items that you might buy. Um, the first one is men to men. When I saw this, I was like, what the fuck is that? But it's actually just this. It's just a sweater. There's no word. They don't say sweater. They say men to men. I don't know where that came from. If you know, then please let me know because I'm really curious. But men to men literally means just like this, a sweater, like a long sleeved kind of sweater. The next one is Y Shotsu. And this is just like a button up shirt. Um, why? I guess because it's shaped like a Y. So yeah, that one's self-explanatory. The next one is uh, not weird when directly translated, but the word panty is actually used because when we say when you know English speakers say panty, we usually think of women's underwear, and for men we just say like underwear or something. But panty in Korea means both women's and men's underwear. So you know if you're talking to a guy that's buying underwear and he's like, oh, panty sayade, so I need to buy 
underwear. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny because when my friend, when I did that fancy beauty review, it was actually, I didn't buy them myself. It was my friend that lent, he bought it in Thailand, I think, and he lent it to me to try. And I didn't upload the video yet. Uh, I had just recorded and he was like, oh, cool. Penty beauty so I was like, did I try the panty beauty? But then I realized he was talking about Fenty. Alright, so the next one is skin. Um, skin is just skin. But what it's referring to is kind of, I guess, like essence. You know, when you like cleanse and then use toner, it's like that liquidy kind of product. That's what they call skin. Sometimes I see it interchange with toner. But yeah, I, I don't know why it's called skin. If you can explain it to me, let me know. And then we have linse. Um, there's no word, because you get shampoo and conditioner, right? But there's no word for. I, people don't really say conditioner, they say rinse, uh, linse. So um, if you go to the salon or something and they tell you they're gonna do linse, then that's what it is. Or if you need to look for it at the e mart, or not the e mart, but like mart in general, um, and you're looking for conditioner, I guess you would look for linse. Now the next one, BJ. Um, BJ stands for uh, broadcast jockey. Um, oh god, remember? Do we all remember when I used to do Africa TV? Um, I think the word originally started from Africa TV, which is if you don't know what it is, it's like it's basically like the Korean Twitch, uh, but it's not just for gaming. It's for like that's where Mukbang really uh, started. Basically, it's just like a site for people to like broadcast, do live broadcasting, and like people will chat and watch, and they can donate money or whatever. But um, yeah, the people that do Africa TV are called BJ <laughs> uh, broadcast jockeys. So the next one didn't actually originate from an English word. I think it, they said it's from Germany. Um, it's like a German word originally, in that it's Arbeite, or for short, Alba. Um, and Arbeite is basically just a part-time job. Yeah, if you're looking for like, not full, if you're not full-fledged like job, but you're looking for a part-time job, then you'll say Alba or Arbeite. But most people say Alba. Or you know, if you're asking like, oh, bohe? And like, ah, Alba hago isso, or Alba jung, then they're doing, they're working that part-time job. Another word you'll often hear in either restaurant or when you're shopping, and that word is service, or even like dorebang. Uh, service is service, uh, and that is pretty much like if you shop somewhere and it's the stuff that they give you, like maybe free samples, or they give you like mini travel sizes of things. Basically, just any free things that they give you. Um, if it's at the dorebang, the karaoke, or whatever. Let's say you pay for one hour, but you know the ajuma is nice, and when your time's about to. Uh, Finish, they'll give you another hour. That will be service. Uh, or if you go to a restaurant and you know the restaurant owners are really nice, they'll give you some extra food item or something uh, on the house, like without charge. That will be service. This next one you'll see a lot in like Pyeongnijam, uh, the convenience store, or at makeup shops or something, or any shop honestly. And it's one plus one, and it just means buy one get one. If you buy one, you get another for free. Or you'll see like two plus one, one plus two, you know things like that. The next one I feel like a lot of people already know, and that's handphone, which is just cell phone. I don't really think people say pon, um, but everyone just says handphone, I guess. And then last but not least, we have hesijang, which is health. Chang, what does chang stand for? Place? Yeah, place. There's many meanings, but one of the meanings is place. Um, so hesijang, health place, gym. You don't really hear people say gym. I think some people even say just health, health, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys found that entertaining to some degree. Um, if you're um, studying Korean, I really recommend you watch things like not just dramas, but also like shows where they're kind of just talking because you don't necessarily have to put, of course, it's important to really study the basics. But once you get over like the basics, um, I think really you don't have to like, put too much effort into trying to like Every, study every single word. I think it's really important as well just to see and hear people speak Korean. And also, it's really important to use your Korean, especially if you don't live in Korea. So, yeah, good luck in your studies in Korean, or if you're not studying Korean, then have a good night, I guess, or day. Bye.